This video is on finding missing angle measures when parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So when finding missing angle measures, you'll always be given at least one angle. In this case, we're given the angle 140 degrees, and we want to match up with the ones that are congruent. So vertical angles are congruent, so the 140 and the angle across from it are going to be congruent. We can also match up the 140 with its corresponding angle position, which will also be 140 degrees. And we can match up the 140 with its alternate exterior angle down at the bottom, which will also be 140 degrees. Now, to find the other values, we take 180 degrees and subtract the original given value, 140, to find the remaining value, one positive 40 degrees. This becomes our supplementary angle because they're on the same line, they're side by side, 40 and 140 give us the total of a straight line, 180. We can then match its vertical angle, which is congruent, which is 40 degrees. We can match its corresponding angle, which is 40 degrees and we can match its alternate exterior angle, which is also 40 degrees. Typically, when given parallel lines cut by a transversal, there will only be two angle measures throughout the entire problem, 140 and 40 for this example. For this example, we're given the angle 50 degrees. We first find its vertical angle, which is congruent, so it's also 50 degrees. We can match its corresponding angle, so it's in the same position, so it's also 50 degrees. And we can match its alternate interior angle because they are also congruent at 50 degrees. Once all congruent angles have been found, then we can subtract our value from 180 to get a value of 130. And that becomes our supplementary angle. Remember, supplementary angles are side by side and form a straight line. We can find the 130 degrees, its vertical angle is congruent, so it's 130. Its corresponding angle in the same position is also 130 degrees. And its alternate interior angle is also 130 degrees. For this example, we're given 92 degrees, so we can match it with its vertical angle, 92 degrees. We can match it with its corresponding angle, 92 degrees, and we can match it with its alternate exterior angle, also 92 degrees. We take our 180, which is our straight line, and we subtract the value that we're given. 180 minus 92 gives us an answer of 88. 88 would be our supplementary angle, which is side by side to the 92 degree angle it forms a straight line. We can then match up its congruent angles, starting with its vertical angle, 88 degrees, its corresponding angle, 88 degrees, and its alternate exterior angle, 88 degrees. For our next example, we're given the angle 78 degrees. Match it up with its vertical angle, because it's also 78 degrees. Match it up with its corresponding angle, it's 78 degrees, and match it up with its interior, alternate interior angle, which is also 78 degrees. We then take our value 180, which is our supplementary angle, and we subtract the value that we're given, the 78 degrees, to get an answer of 102 degrees. That is our remaining value that forms the straight line. We can then find its vertical angle, 102 degrees, finding its corresponding angle, 102 degrees, and its alternate exterior angle, 102 degrees. For our next problem, we're given the angle 65. We can match it up with its vertical angle, 65 degrees. We can match it up with its corresponding angle, 65 degrees and we can match it up with its alternate interior angle, 65 degrees. We then take our supplementary angle, 180 degrees, and subtract the value that is given, which is 65, 
to get an answer of 115, 115 degrees. That means that the 65 and the 115 are side by side to form the straight line 180. And we use that value to find the missing angles. The vertical angle is also 115 degrees. The corresponding angle is also 115 degrees and the alternate interior angle is also 115 degrees. For our next problem, we're given the measure of 90 degrees. 90 degrees, we can find the vertical angle. 90 degrees are congruent. The corresponding angle is also 90 degrees, and the alternate in exterior angle is also 90 degrees. We take our supplementary angle 180 and subtract it from the value given, which is 90, and we get another 90 degree angle. So that means that the supplementary angle, the one that's side by side that forms the straight line, is also 90 degrees. Its vertical angle is 90 degrees. That angle's corresponding angle is 90 degrees. And the alternate exterior angle is also 90 degrees. For our next example, we're given the angle measure of 110 degrees. So we start by finding its vertical angle, 110 degrees. Find its corresponding angle and label it 110 degrees. And find its alternate exterior angle and label it 110 degrees. We then take our supplementary angle, 180, and subtract the value that's given, the 110, to get an answer of 70 degrees. This makes the supplementary angle, the angle that's side by side, the new value 70. Its vertical angle is also 70 degrees. Its corresponding angle is also 70 degrees. And its alternate exterior angle is also 70 degrees. For this problem, we're given the angle measure 61.5, finding its vertical angle, which is congruent, meaning it's also 61.5. Its corresponding angle is also 61.5, and its alternate exterior angle is also 61.5. All of those are congruent. We then take our supplementary angle of 180 degrees and subtract the value that's given, the 61.5, which gives us a value of 118.5 degrees. That is our angle measure that is side by side to make the straight line. We then work the same process by finding its vertical angle, which is congruent with 118.5 degrees. Its corresponding angle is 118.5 degrees, and its alternate exterior angle is also 118.5 degrees. For this problem, we're given an angle measure of 110, and we're only asked to find one other angle. Now, this angle out here is the alternate exterior angle. Alternate exterior angles are congruent, so that means that it is also 110 degrees. In this problem, we're given the measure 84. The missing angle is the alternate, because they're on opposite sides, interior angle. Alternate interior angles are congruent, meaning that the missing angle measure is also 84 degrees. In this problem, we're given 100 degrees and we have to find the missing angle. Now, the missing angle, they're not on opposite sides. 100 and the missing angle are on the same side. That is called consecutive interior angles. And in second, consecutive interior angles are equal to 180 degrees. So we would take our 180 and subtract the value that's given, 100, to get the missing angle measure, 80 degrees. For this problem, we're given the measure 111 degrees. The missing angle measure is the alternate interior angle. And this alternate interior angle is congruent, meaning that they're the same measure, 111 degrees. For this problem, we're given the angle measure 125 degrees. The missing angle measure is the alternate interior angle. Alternate interior angles are congruent, meaning that it is also 125 degrees. For this problem, we're given 47 degrees. 
the missing angle measures on the outside edge. So it is the alternate exterior angle. Alternate exterior angles are congruent. So that means the missing angle is also 47 degrees. For this problem, we're given the angle measure 53 degrees. The missing angle measure is in the corresponding position. Corresponding angles are congruent. So that means that the missing angle is also 53 degrees. For our last problem, we're given the angle measure 113 degrees. The missing angle measure is in the alternate interior position. Alternate interior angles are congruent, meaning the missing angle is also 113 degrees.